All right, so lucky us, we're back in today with a special, again, with Christine Marcosello of the Marcosello team. And we are going to talk today about team structure in real estate, why it's important, and how it can help you grow your real estate business or mortgage business by setting up your team a certain way. excited to be here with Christine Marcosello. She has been a superhero in my life since I met her like eight years ago. And I've watched her grow from just Christine herself all the way to now, how many members do you have on your team? 10. 10, 10 folks, 10 folks on the team. So, and how much has your business grown in that eight years, Christine? So eight years ago would have been what, like 2015-ish yes. or so? Yep. Okay, so um, I was selling around 50 houses a year. Super respectable. And yes, and exhausted and all the things. Mm -hmm. And today, this year we closed 182. 182, yes. wow. So that's so quite a lot of growth. Yes, a lot of growth, both in probably your personal life and your business life. Oh, so much. Because it's be a 10 day show. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll try so, not to do that to anyone. Yeah, right. So, how did you start? What was your first hire? So, let's just be clear on something. I never wanted a team. <sighs> And I proudly talk about that because I yeah. think it's important to know, like, I think a lot of teams are born out of like, I want a team. Like, I want, like, look at me, I have a team. Mm -hmm. And I was like, don't look at me, I don't have a team. <laughs> and then I was like, crap, I need a team. <laughs> so that's kind of like how it evolved was me going, all right, I'm like literally bashing my head onto this table constantly because mm -hmm. I'm hitting a ceiling that I will never break through right. if I don't get some help. And something that had always been like critical to me, which was our customer service, my mm -hmm. customer service at the time, was honestly starting to drop. Mm -hmm. And that's like a sad thing to admit, but that's finally what made me mm -hmm. know I needed a team. Right. So when that started to happen, I finally came around to the idea that, all right, it's okay to get some help here. Like, yes, I can do things perfectly and wonderfully, but maybe I could actually be a little bit better if I had some help. Surprising concept. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think we went out for beers one night. And I, was like, I was like, I'm dying. I was like, how on earth are you doing all this? I'm like, I'm already ready. Like what? I mean, where should you need yeah. some help? Christine. So that was in 2016. And that year I sold 65 homes wow. on my own. And I was like, it was just a hot mess behind the scenes. I mean, it wasn't, nobody would have known, but to me it felt like very messy and terrible. So I was convinced that I needed to hire an assistant. Mm -hmm. And I think that's also a mistake a lot of teams make is they hire, they just build themselves up with agents, right? right? So to me though, it was very important to systematize what we were doing. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't gonna do that with another agent. I was just gonna create a bigger mess. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right, I was very, even though I was making a lot of money, I was afraid of having to pay somebody's salary, right? I mean, that's a big fear. So. I started by going, all right, I'm going to save a year's worth of salary in a mm -hmm. bank account that has nothing to do with my reserves. Mm -hmm. So my business costs a certain amount, my life costs a certain amount, mm -hmm. and I wanted to have another amount that was reserved. So I knew that I could pay that person. Right. And that kind of gave me the confidence to go, okay, now I can hire somebody. Mm -hmm. So I hired my executive assistant as my first hire mm -hmm. and her and I worked together to build systems. What, what do I do? Like I had nothing written down. I knew what I did. Mm -hmm. I knew what the flow of the listing was. I knew how to sell a house. I knew who needed to be communicated with, but it was all living here. Yes. I never wrote it down. I never systematized it because what? It was just you at the time. So her and I worked together to build that. It's interesting. I think for a lot of agents and probably loan officers, including myself to watch this and hear systems and structure Bah! Like nobody gets into real estate to have structure and systems, right? But something that I've done in my own business with my own team over the last couple of years, now that, you know, the craziness has died down a little bit is to really step back and be like, well, systems will actually set you free mm -hmm. if you have them in place. So what did that process look like? You know, taking taking Christine Marcosello's brain and putting it, what, did you do a CRM? We did, no, we just did a brain dump, literally. Like mm -hmm. we started with, gosh, it's hard to even remember because it feels like it was 40 years ago, but like mm -hmm. we just started with, okay, what are the main structures? Like what are the models first? Okay, how to list a house? <laughs> like literally I just wrote big structures. Like what are the core pieces of what I do? Mm -hmm. And then her and I worked together on 
what does that look like when somebody else is helping you? Like I wrote them all down. And I think one of the hardest things is, for a real estate agent is thinking, I don't have time to do that. Like I don't have any time to do that. I can never do that. You will be shocked if you lock yourself in a room for three hours, you could write down every system you have. Yes. I, <laughs> and that's like so true. I agree. I agree. Because if you sit it's there, it's actually not that much, right? Yes. It's like, okay, this has to happen, then this, and here's what I do for marketing. I had to like, here's who has to order a photo, like whatever. It, it just spills right out of you. Mm -hmm. So I wrote down all that. And then her and I really put the work into like, what does this look like as a plan? Right. So what technology are we going to use to run the plan? How are you and I going to communicate about what's been done? Mm -hmm. And how are we going to communicate with the client? What emails need to go out? And we just built these beautiful plans that we still use today, yes. six years later. Yes. And I know that, that that effort at the time or before you've put that structure in place, it does feel monumental. It does. But then you get like addicted to it. Yes. And you're like, 100%. I need an SOP. That's what my team, we call a standard operating procedure. I don't know where Kevin came up with that one, but there you go. Mm -hmm. Like an SOP, we need an SOP for this now yeah. because something will come up in your business and you're like, you realize you had a hole in them. And then you're like, wow, I need this. And then you get really excited. And I know people are watching this, like these two nerd ladies, <laughs> like nerding out on this, but it, it's true, like addicted to yeah. it. So what, um, what kind of tech systems did you, I mean, you don't have to tell me everything, but like, what did you do to like share between the two of you? Like, how did you, cause I think yeah. that's, that's tough for people. It is. And I mean, we, we use a basic program that, um, we just discovered through Google searching, like mm -hmm. what we needed and mm -hmm. we stumbled upon this program and it's not an industry known program. Like I, I think it's still in like a beta test phase and I don't think it's being developed anymore, right. but it works for us and we still use it, but it's a checklist system. You Perfect. can do it on Google Sheets. I mean, yes. it's just a checklist yes. that we share. So we mm -hmm. have, you know, boards that track our pendings. We have like new listing boards where we highlight things in different colors, red, green, yellow. They mean mm -hmm. things to us. You would have no idea what you're looking at, mm -hmm. but that's how we track together. And then in terms of the steps, it's literally check done, yes. check done. We have tasks that are contingent upon each other. And the beauty of it is like as the agent, you just throw up your brain mm -hmm. and the administrative operational person builds it. Right. So that's where your hiring comes in because obviously it's critical to hire somebody that's not just your BFF or, you know, somebody who's inclined yes. the way you are as an agent. You need somebody that's operationally yes. that says, let me take that throw up that you just placed on the table <laughs> and let me separate that into all the things that you ate. Right. Exactly. <laughs> right. It's a great analogy. It's a right? great analogy. You'll never forget um, that one. But let's take a minute to talk there about that because I'm a big believer in DISC, in Clifton Strengths, yeah. like... I do not need another Anna Smith on the Anna Smith team. Right. I've got, I'm plenty of me. So when I'm going out and looking for team teammates, I assume like you, I'm looking for people that represent different strengths than mm -hmm. what I have. So what did that look like for real estate? Yeah. So you want to hire your weakness, right? Which mm -hmm. is usually your opposite. So um, for an operational role, typically they're more introverted. They're mm -hmm. more focused on the details. They're, mm -hmm. you know, they get a lot of energy from checking boxes. Mm -hmm. They get almost no energy from talking to a human. Right. They want to do the task. They want to check the box. They mm -hmm. want to build something. They don't want to go out and socialize. Right. So, I mean, that's a pretty simple thing to, to tell when you're interviewing somebody mm -hmm. and just a basic personality assessment will tell right. you that right away. So, and then as you're building out the pieces of the team, because now, you know, if we're talking like you, you dumped Christine's brain on a piece of paper, okay, well, now you separate the buy side and the sell side. And I'm yeah. sure that's a whole different, yeah. you know. So I well. am just, the only reason that I decided to do that is because I'm a student of Keller Williams and mm -hmm. because that's, that was their original model. It's not even so much anymore, mm -hmm. um, but that was the original model of the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book. Okay. And I am one that says, tell me what to do. And if it's proven, I'm going to copy it. I mean, it's very simple. And mm -hmm. that red book is mm -hmm. proven. So I was like, I'm going to read the book and I'm going to do what it tells me to do. Right. And that's literally all I did was did what the book told me to do and stuck to it. That's the thing. People get in their heads about, well, yes. that won't work. No one will want to do that. People won't want to do this. Mm -hmm. No one will want that split. Nobody will do this. Nobody. You're telling yourself lies because you're insecure. Yeah. And so instead of just taking all those little self-doubt things, I just mm -hmm. said, this is proven. This works. This is a model and I'm going to copy it. And so well, I did. the hugest thing I'm taking from there too is you don't have to just 
reinvent the wheel. Like you do not have to actually don't reinvent the wheel. Yeah, right? Like you, there's people out here that have been successful doing it. You know, you've got um, with Keller Williams background or let's just say, you know, back to like the structure. And when I asked about like how you were organizing it, well, you don't have to make that stuff up on your own. Get a coach. Yes. Go to um, what Brian Buffini. Go online. Do some research for what other people have done, and you can be successful just gleaning information. Choose from other a model. It doesn't have has nothing to do with Keller Williams. That's just the model I chose. Yes. Research the models. Choose mm -hmm. one and execute it. Right. That's all there is to it. So for me, it was the specialist model. So, and the thing about that is. You know, I think a lot of people do try to follow it, but they cheat. You know, they're like, well, but you can sell, you know, you can list your mom's house or you can list your, you know, friend's house. And, right. and we buy into the fact that why would I when this specialist can do it better? Right. So if you're on my team, you're not thinking like, oh, I can't believe I have to give my friends listing to whoever. Right. It's total buy-in on they can do it better. Right. Right. And I can do buyers better. Right. And that started with me giving up my own buyers. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was the example that set this up <clears throat> because if I had cherry picked mm -hmm. all of the best buyers. You would have had all of And your said, well, yes. I everybody else has to believe in this specialist model. Mm -hmm. But for me, you know, I'm going to just keep working with the buyers I want to work. It would have gone t terribly wrong. We would not be sitting here today. Uh, it was right. that decision that changed everything for right. me to say, I'm going to hire somebody and I'm going to trust them 100% mm -hmm. and I'm going to run this model because how could I say it works if I don't believe in it? Right. So Love that's that. what we did. And I think it would be worth kind of talking about for, you know, our viewers as well. Like, you know, you said something that really resonates with me about telling yourself a bunch of lies. And like you, as every human being, not just mm -hmm. you or I, we tell ourselves stories all day long, yeah. like little stories about everything, like little stories about me. And I really wanted to wear a different dress to this, to this, um, interview and wow, it won't look as good on camera or whatever. Like, and it's bullshit really. Mm -hmm. Like at the end of the day, you know, analyzing where you are telling yourself those stories. Um, I just read a book code to the extraordinary mind phenomenal for people that maybe don't realize how limited yeah. they are by those stories yeah. and it's limiting your business growth your personal growth all mm -hmm. of that but then you start realizing all the limitations and you're like maybe I, maybe I need to take a nap because yeah. it's like holy cow it can be very overwhelming to realize yeah. where you're limiting yourself yeah. right like even I remember you said I think we were out at like Henry Street and we'd gone for those drinks and you were like well but who's gonna make my flyers. I do such a good job on my flyers. Can you imagine it's making so sad. your flyers now? <laughs> no. I mean, right. it's so sad. And like, it's okay to still believe that I could make the best flyer that's ever known to man. Like, you can still believe that and you can also see the value in not doing those tasks. Right. Like, exactly. I had to get to a place where I was okay with a spelling error. Like, <laughs> it happens, we move on. Like, yes. But I wasn't okay with that for so long. I was like, no, no, because I need to make the mistake. Like, if it's going to be made, it's got to be me because then there's no feelings. And But that's just not, you're never going to grow like never that. Gonna grow like never going to grow like that. So now your team is structured. You've got listing specialists, buyer specialists, showing assistants. You've got your operations staff that works inside. Yeah. Um, and everybody, it all goes well. We've done tons of transactions together. It all goes well. Um, optimized performance. Where's, mm -hmm. What's your role now on the team? Well, I mean, I have a lot of different roles, including <laughs> HR director. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I still consider myself the director of operations, mm -hmm. so which is a giant role still. So yes. it's not a physical role. Like I don't physically need to sit here and do anything with that role, but I oversee everything. Right. I mean, and I think, you know, Madison's a good example. She moved from buyer specialist into marketing director mm -hmm. and she's seeing this whole other side of me that, right. that half of the team doesn't even know exists because until you're working with me on that level, you have no idea how I am in a marketing role or in an operations role mm -hmm. or in a sales coaching role, or you just don't see that side. Right. So I'm still kind of, I have my hands in all the different facets of our right. business and I'm still the puppet master, I guess I would say right. of all of those individual pieces that make up who we are. Absolutely. So it's very, 
it looks like a well-oiled machine because there is so much that's done on the back end that nobody sees. Yes, that going through those procedures, tweaking exactly. them all the time, yes. making sure if something's like, oh, this could go better. Yeah. You know, I'm still, I do that all the time yeah. for yeah. the business like, this well. messaging isn't really being delivered right. Like, let's tweak this. Like, yes. it's still the minutia, but I'm still attached to believing that the attention to the minutia mm -hmm. is what ultimately results in the big success. Absolutely. In um, mortgage, real estate, you know, anything of this nature, you're ultimately dealing with so many different personality right. types as clients as yeah. well. So just because something worked X, Y, Z for a length of time doesn't necessarily mean it will again. So yeah. you always have to be, you know, um, refining. challenging, refining, etc. And I know there's things that you do too with the team to like make sure that your team is a part of some of these brainstorming mm -hmm. exercises. I oh, do yeah. that with my team. I'm like, Kevin, what do you think? Amber, how can I make this better for you so that way you can serve the clients better? Yeah. What has, um, what, what do you think like continues to inspire your team to be part of the team? What, think, what's that magic? I mean, there's a few things. One is the expectation that is set for them. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think anybody would be here that has no desire to succeed. You know what I mean? Like, I think a lot of teams collect people, Yes. but the people that they're collecting are not on the same train. They're, you know what I mean? Like they're, they're all driving their cars, but they're not going the same direction. Like for us, we, they know when I hire somebody, I try to scare them off of the team. <laughs> like I try really hard to make them not join the team because I'm testing them. Like right. I want them to be so afraid of this role and what it means for them that if they're not up for it, they're not having a second interview. They're right. going to self-select down and be like, oh, this isn't really going to work out for me. Right. Yes. Like, so I think that because we're so selective, mm -hmm. like we don't hire, like I have people email me constantly, like, can I join your team? It's like, we're not hiring. Right. So it's not just collecting bodies and, you know, trying to build through quantity. Mm -hmm. It's truly carrying out a mission and vision. And um, we hire to our org chart. So like we have a whole chart with all the positions and the next year positions and the three year positions. Mm -hmm. And until we've reached our goals for today, mm -hmm. we don't hire that next role. Right. So it's not unlimited agent role. There's a very selected few and they have high standards. So I call them the Super Bowl team. So they know when they show up, like mm -hmm. you're performing like the Super Bowl team. Right. So I think that like helps keep people in alignment and motivated is mm -hmm. that they know they're here to be the best and to do the best work and to live their best life through that. Yeah. I don't want people here making $20,000. No. Right. Like, I want them making hundreds of thousands of dollars. Right. Because that elevates the yeah. team too. Well, right. And, and keeps them inspired. And that allows me to carry out my vision, which is for them to live a life of freedom and you know right. their best life and find leverage within the team as well. Mm -hmm. It's not just me that gets the benefit of growing a team mm -hmm. and now I have some extra time. It's like, I want that for them too and I want to teach them how to do that. Right, exactly. You said something that really stuck there where it's like, you know, some people will just bring anybody on. Yeah, well, Mo, I, I think that's... <laughs> kind of a brokerage model right it's like yeah it's a joke like amongst agents like you know when I interviewed when I yeah. was 25 years old I was like oh I hope they take me you know what I mean <laughs> like where we know today like most brokerages are just you want to be a real estate agent you want to sign up with us great here's right. the paperwork get started and I think it's the same with teams and that's not a judgment if that's right or wrong that's just not our way yes you know it's not it's certainly a way like yes. that that works like quantity 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 you know everybody has a mother brother sister uncle who's going to buy or sell a house mm -hmm. so every person is potentially transactional we just don't look at it that way absolutely I really appreciate that so what What's like the horizon? Like, so we've got, we're, it's 10 people. You did 180 something transactions. Like what inspires Christine to keep the, the wheels going? Because, you know, you reach a certain point of success and it's like, all right, I've done that now. I'm tired. Yeah. And that's about <laughs> me. Like that's, that is true. I can talk about how I personally feel and like, there's always something next for me, but this team is a lot. It's an animal. It's alive. Like it's going to mm -hmm. grow and progress and change and evolve. And mm -hmm. there's room for others to have a say and a do in that. I mean, that's what creates leadership opportunities right. with, in the team is it's evolution. Mm -hmm. So it's not about me. It's not about like, I want it to be this. It's mm -hmm. what is it doing right now to manifest its future? Right. And then what type of leadership positions do we have that become available because of that? 
and I can do whatever I want. I could retire tomorrow if I wanted to. Like right. I, you know, I could. Somebody can take my job, but they have to literally pull it out of my hands and prove that they are ready to take it. Right. But if that happened tomorrow, I would give it up. Right. So exactly. you know, it's not like oh, by next year we're gonna do 500 sales. Like that's mm -hmm. not exactly like yes, we set goals. Mm -hmm. But it's more about we allow the business to force the growth. Mm -hmm. We don't try to force the business with growth, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like the business itself forces us to grow. Yes. When we have too much business, just like me as a single agent, we grow. Mm -hmm. Then, okay, now I got now I had an assistant in 2016. And now she's doing all those flyers and all that nonsense. Mm -hmm. And so guess what happens? I didn't get to sit back and go, oh my God, I have more free time. Right. I freaking sold 75 houses. Right. So I was like... Okay, so now like there's always like leverage and building mm -hmm. and puzzle pieces to put into place. Mm -hmm. But if you try to force it, I think that's where a lot of teams get into financial trouble too, because like they tried to force something that isn't happening and now right. they're overextended. Mm -hmm. So so let's talk about that really quickly too. Um, you taught a class. I just listened so well, Christy. <laughs> but you taught a class. I don't remember where or it was, but I was there and um, about you know you reach a re reach yes. a pain point. And then you grow and then you yeah, reach yeah. a pain point and then you grow and um how do you know when that pain point is for because you know like as i'm growing my team it's like okay well i'd love to put x person in place this makes sense now but where is it for you that 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 point is made where it's worth the risk to outlay the money so it's different at different stages of the business. In the beginning, it was because you keep hitting your head against a literal ceiling and you go backwards. Mm -hmm. And then you hit your head and then you go backwards. So you, it's the repeated pattern of mm -hmm. not being able to break through a ceiling of achievement. So right. that's in the beginning stages. At this stage, it's really more about um, something breaks. <laughs> like literally like a system will break because mm -hmm. it's too, it's just um, maxed, you know? Like Southwest Airlines? It, exactly, <laughs> exactly. It's, it's, your system wasn't scaled for growth. Right. You've grown out of your system and something has broken or you've mm -hmm. added a team member and we're like, oh shoot, this doesn't talk to that person in the way we need it to. So a system will break and it's either then a quick eval. Do we need a new system? Do we need a new, a new tool? Yes. So that's how you know when your business gets bigger. It's like right. stuff starts breaking and, and then right. you know. It's not so much that personal pain anymore. Mm -hmm. It's things break. Right. And you and there's that. fallout. And it's unfortunately usually at the expense of like a customer. Like we forget to do something. or And then we're like, oh my God, this didn't alert this person to do that. Like, okay, we got to fix it. And such a different mentality, you know, I obviously talk to so many real estate agents, that's one of my main customers, is the real estate agent, the broker, etc. And what a different mindset to be able to say, you know, stuff breaks, sometimes it goes wrong, yeah. and it's sometimes at the expense of our client, and not being so hyper controlling that you can't just be like, all right, we'll fix it, because yeah. stuff happens. Yeah. doesn't matter if you're the Marcusello team, the Anna Smith team, Target, Always Amazon, yeah. Southwest, it doesn't matter what business it is, we're in the business of humanity, right? Yeah. So stuff happens, yeah. Yeah. being able to go in through that. Well, and that gets into leadership, which is again, a whole yeah. other discussion, but let's just use the Southwest Airlines. Like people are mm -hmm. mad, they're disrupted and all that, but what more could you do than what Southwest did? Mm -hmm. We'll reimburse you for everything. And you know people are taking advantage. I've heard so oh, many people sure. say, oh, I submitted this and this. Like people are gonna take advantage of that, but what more could they possibly do? They apologize. They yeah. gave people free bonus points. They are covering their hotel costs. They've done everything they can. But what could have happened? They could have blamed the technology, mm -hmm. blamed somebody, and really done nothing for people. They could have. Mm -hmm. So I think you know a lot of that has to do with being humble and being vulnerable. That's always the way. Yes. Like right. that is a huge concept. I think is to to own things. And I always say to my team, like, what's your DNA on this? Like something right. goes wrong. Ask yourself that first, and I hope I model that for them. Can you say what DNA is? What what is that? Like mean? your DNA. DNA, like what part of that problem was caused by you right right <laughs> and always ask yourself that first That's a I think a lot of people you know it's a victim mentality but like we don't there's no room for that yeah like it's okay that's fine you want to make an excuse but like what did you do? like only right. what you had to do with that and i promise you i'm gonna do that too yeah exactly so that's a huge, huge huge thing huge thing for sure and i mean you just demonstrated it in this conversation so 
So you guys, only great things coming forward for the Marcosella team. And when it doesn't go right, we're going to fix it yeah. and go on from there. But um, if you have any questions about team building, I mean, I don't know if Christine's hiring at the moment or looking for any positions, but um, I'm sure she would take we some questions. We have a bench. Yeah, right? The we bench. have a bench. I love the bench. Yeah. Um, and I really appreciate you chatting with me today. It's always excellent. So.